Okay, my friends, I was inspired and called to share the 11 laws of God. It's a powerful text. You can find it over on my website. It's so potent for bringing us into alignment and helping us realize the truer and deeper self. And reading this in, a, in the morning or just helping us attune our mentality, our attitude, our perspective is so powerful for self-realization and really just no longer like compensating or losing ourselves and realizing the truth, the silent truth around us at all times. So let's find some alignment. The 11 laws of God. The law of amen. You were made in the likeness of of a peace that nothing can disturb. Reclaim your peace that you may attain to your reason for coming into existence, the enjoyment of life. Wow. Your nature is unconquerable peace. Therefore, nothing or no, no one in the world can be against you. All experiences come to you to promote your reclamation of peace that you may turn and acquire wisdom and spiritual power. The Law of Tehuti. When all of your thoughts, feelings, and actions reflect the Word of God, then the power of God's Spirit and the peace that nothing can challenge will flow through your being. The Law of Sakar. When the emotions of man manifest in response to the Word of God, they have all the power to influence the course of any and all events in the world. The Law of Mat God needs you in order to come into the world. Fulfilling God's need is the highest act of love, and only through your love for God can you fulfill your love for others. Become the love of God in the world for the protection of the world. Wow. Law number one, love the Father. Law number two, love your brother. Haru Huti, know that God neither punishes nor rewards nor protects, that you will have the comfort of controlling these for yourself. Hmm. Law of Haru, you have the power but not the right to ignore God's law. Choose to follow the law of God with love and joy that grows out of your understanding and the wisdom and power of God's spirit will flow through your being. The law of Heru. You have the power but not the right to ignore God's law. Choose to follow the law of God with love and joy that grows out of your understanding and the wisdom and the power of God's spirit will flow through your being. Law of Het Heru. It is not what you imagine. It is who is imagining. Are you a human or a divine being? It's not what you know. It's who is the knower. It's not what you see. It's who is the seer. Law of Sebek. It is not what you think or what you affirm. It is who is thinking and who is affirming. Are you human or a divine being? Law of Aset. Prepare to sacrifice everything to become the vessel for, of God on earth, and you will in turn receive everything. This is devotion to serving God. Law of Geb. Know that from heaven you came and to heaven you will return. Seek not enduring works on earth. You are the master of the earth through your likeness with God. So, my friends, as you can see, such potent, potent excerpts here that reflect, you know, so much of the sacred and, and you know, the, just the ancient knowledge. I love the first one, and we're going to dive into a couple of these really briefly here. But you were made in the likeness of a peace that nothing can disturb. My friends, in peace is where self-realization occurs. During turbulence, that is actually where we're getting like basically 
realizing the other pole so that we can realize self later. But like peace is where self lies. God is in the silence. Your true self is always at peace, an unshakable peace, right? And when we're thinking of the world and letting the world move our emotions and move our mind and whatnot, we are losing our power. We are losing our peace, right? Man should be at ease, right? For the enjoyment of life. That is the law, the first law. And Jesus in the Essene sect, right? You, you can go get, check out the Essene gospels and whatnot, but may peace be with you was what the brotherhood said in greeting and goodbye. May peace be with you. When you, uh, when you aspire to peace, that means you have to become an alchemist of being able to transmute circumstance and not let things waver you. To be able to enter situations at work, for instance, where people can trigger you and all these things, but be the alchemist that can balance, balance the polarities in any situation, right? And to be, and to know that you are made in the likeness of the peace that nothing can disturb. You are overwhelming peace at your core. Sit in that, breathe in that, find that, and just hold to it as firmly as possible, you know, like like hold that balance and that is like the platform for for alignment for rectifying and attuning the inner world and outer world if your nature is unconquerable peace then nothing or no one in the world can be against you all experiences come to you to promote the re the reclamation of peace you see very like turbulent situations that come up you, you know say like um maybe a job is leaving you maybe a house is leaving you you know maybe your children are leaving you maybe your lover is leaving you or something like this which create a whole bunch of emotional chaos that it is an experience that is promoting the reclamation of your peace because in order to transmute and overcome that you must find stronger footing inside yourself you must sink deeper mm -hmm. right to transmute. And those challenges essentially will reveal attachments and fear inside of you. And when we are ruled by fear, we are not sitting in unshakable peace. Unshakable peace is the result of understanding and grace. When you have understanding of what is going on out here, of the bigger picture, how can petty fears of moment to moment things or petty attachments shake your peace, right? When the emotions of man manifest in response to the word of God, they have all the power to influence the course of any and all events in the world. My friends, James Allen talks about this a bunch too. And the most, one of the most powerful forces out here is imagination, aspiration, and faith, right? Because faith is actually an emotion. It's an emotion of deep connection and knowing. And when we imagine and aspire to the spiritual heights, to aspire to, uh, you know, being a vessel, a vehicle of God's plan, to aspire into, you know, the spiritual image ideal in our mind, right? And we open ourselves to the flow. We open ourselves to, you know, God's will. And we become a vessel. Basically, that inspires deep emotions. It's transmuting the like physical attachment emotions into spiritual, spiritual powers of emotion, right? Like lust into love, you know, vision into spiritual vision, the two into one. So basically, it's like divine inspiration. Such powerful, overwhelming emotions of the soul are unleashed. The rays of the soul, when we open it to a like. I guess it opened its eyes unbound from the earth in response to the word of God. This is the last one I want to talk about. God's, God needs you in order to come into the world. Okay. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, 
God's work will not be manifest by cowards. I love that. And also, my friends, like, God, God is ever seeking the vehicles, the vessels to manifest his plan onto earth. And those who step up to the roll call, those who open themselves, aspire to and attune with that will be granted power, will be granted like, like, I guess, not even power on an ego level. They'll become a vessel of something higher, right? And when you're doing creative works, when you're like aspiring, when you're creating, when you're aligning, when you're doing in meditation, right? Really think about becoming a vessel of something higher. And this helps you get out of your own way. It helps the genius, the greatness, the great plan flow where one movement, right, is worth a million others because it is done in direct connection with, with the, the strategy being played out in a sense, right? Fulfilling God's need is the highest act of love. And only through your love for God can fuf you fulfill your love for others. Wow. Become the love of God in the world for the protection of the world. Last one. Know that God neither punishes nor rewards nor protects. My friends, self-reliance. This is in your hands. It's in your hands. Whether you have the courage to push on, to take risks, you know, to be bold. Like, why are you still guilt tripping yourself and shaming yourself and all these things? And like, we punish ourselves. We feel like we need to punish ourselves when we don't live in alignment with some, some kind of like predetermined standard. But all this goes away when we find the unshakable peace at the center, right? And the wise, compassionate king inside of you holds this suffering ego, this victim of circumstance and, and you know, all of this bullshit just doing his best, right? Your divine king holds you. That Christ within you holds you. He's not going to punish you. He's going to compassionately understand. Can you compassionately understand the things about yourself that you cringe at? That you look away from, that you hate, right? God neither punishes nor rewards, right? There is no transaction with doing great work, with doing, you know, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Like, the reward is the doing of itself. And he does not protect. Ah, my friends, you are creating, you are at the source of your reality, right? On all levels, okay? We are a co-creator. Circumstance occurs out here, but at the same time, how we respond to it and the seeds we once sowed are creating these circumstances. You are controlling all of this for yourself. Hell yeah, my friends. Powerful keys, the 11 laws of God. Powerful keys for alignment with the day, alignment with the spirit of the hour and true power. Faith and works, my friends. If you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, link in the description for a free uh, Skype session. Also, um, hell yeah, drop a comment of what you want to dive in deeper. Ask any questions. You can always hit me up on Instagram. And I would love to start making videos on more question answer based stuff. And I always appreciate hitting that like button, sharing this video anywhere you can. And if you feel called to give back to me in any way, I really appreciate all my supporters over on Patreon too view some of my premium videos. Anyways, thanks for being here. I hope you find peace, an unshakable peace that's center within you and keep cultivating and growing that being. Hell yeah, my friends, Alignment 2020. Peace out.